Mogli, πού πα. Έλα, πάμε. When we say that the European Union sucks and we need to fix it, that is a very radical position. Stop grazing. You're a Go. In 2015, Yanis Varoufakis became infamous as Greece's leather clad finance minister who went to war with Brussels against austerity and lost. Now he's back and going to battle with the EU establishment again, this time as the face of a radical pro European movement. Euros every year to spend on the green transition that is necessary to create good quality jobs and to save the planet. Where do we find the 100 billion euros that we need every year to fight poverty? It's called the New Deal for Europe. We are the only contenders in the May European Parliament elections that have specific answers to what can happen tomorrow morning across Europe. And we're seeking your vote. This is a pivotal moment. We can see it in Britain with Brexit. We can see it in the United States with Trump and the crumpling Democratic Party. These are times that 200 years from now will be debated, like the 1920s and 30s. With the traditional left in disarray, Varoufakis says Europe needs saving from a broken establishment on one side and an emboldened ultra-right led by Italy's Matteo Salvini on the other. His solution is DM25, a movement that argues the only way to restore lost faith in the European Union is to convince us that it can function as an effective, transparent democracy. We joined Varoufakis and the DM team in the run-up to the European parliamentary elections to see if it can deliver the revolution it's calling for. I'm supposed to be logging us on to Skype to yeah. chat with David now. Oh, there's McWilliams. How is the campaign going? We can all agree as progressives that um, we want a fairer world. We want less inequality, that we want more green investment that we want a better treatment of foreigners, newcomers in our countries. But then, when it comes to how do we do that? Where does the money come from for green investments and the creation of good quality jobs? So this is what we did as DiEM25. You know that for three years now, we've been asking anyone who cares to sit around the table with us and discuss these issues. And a lot of people did. A lot of people said no. What is your personal feeling about the election on that road ahead. If we manage to place even just a few MEPs in the European Parliament that work as a wedge that prizes apart this very cozy relationship between the liberal establishment and the neo-fascists, that is, if you want, the limit of our ambition for May 2019. Okay, excellent guys. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks David. Thank you, David. Bye. Bye. Is that what you hope then? There'll be a new left at the end of this? I, I do hope so, because during the, the Second World War, communists, liberals, Winston Churchill coalesced against the Nazis. We better coalesce to fight the, the, the good fight. <laughs> it, it all sounds a bit Star Wars. I loathe it? Star Wars. <laughs> what? It's boring. This could be a very it's long too American. <laughs> it's, you know, the good guys, cowboys and Indians. Whereas Star Trek is scientific communism. Let me, let me show you something. You see how crazy I am? Let me get my phone. And there, look. There's no trace of my money. How I live. This is the 24th century. Material needs no longer exist. Communism. Then what's the challenge? So how does a fanatically democratic, member-funded movement that is trying to agree one agenda for the whole of Europe work? Well, it's complicated. Because DM25 is a movement, not a political party, if it wants to run anywhere in elections, it has to either create separate national parties in different countries, like Mera 25 in Greece, or partner with existing parties that have signed up to the DiEM25 agenda, and they all sit under the broader coalition of European Spring. DiEM as a movement doesn't yet have the funding, the media presence, the supporter base of a Salvini or a Macron. Do you know if like Salvini's aware of your campaign? I know that he's aware of our campaign, he's not worried. But with the resources you have, can you take on these opponents? This question would uh, end any political movement uh, before it began. 
if you would say, do we have the resources to do this? No, of course you don't. When you begin, you begin. DM25 officially has no leader. It has a coordinating collective. This includes Yanis, cultural icons Brian Eno and Noam Chomsky, and Eric Edmund. Eric is 26, and he spent the last eight months driving across Greece trying to organize the movement. Which one's ours? This is us. We went with him to Salamina, a large island close to Athens, where he was leafleting with a group of activists. <laughs> I hear you're excellent at this. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he, he said he's not interested. If it was from Golden Dawn, maybe. Oh. You know the Golden Dawn, right? Yeah, the neo-Nazi party. If you ne no, neo-Nazi party, it is, you know, worse. So, sorry. Salamina is the kind of place that will either vote for Mera or they will vote for Golden Dawn. And I think that's something that us on the left are not very good at recognizing. That sometimes we are speaking to the kind of voters that might go either way. And because we are so ideological about what we do, we cannot conceive that somebody who might potentially be our supporter would also consider voting for a neo-Nazi party. So we're really trying to be the progressive alternative, the, the sort of the more ambitious uh, alternative for people to vote for. Basically an anti-establishment movement that isn't populist. racist. All, we're all populist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is where I think the left belongs. Taxi driver? Taxi, they're good. Kalispera says. Yes, to Mere Gospede, Oriste. To Yanni Varoufaki, to Goma. Back in Athens, Yanis and his wife, Denai Stratu, were also out courting voters. Of course, from Brazil? Yeah. Okay. I follow you in Twitter. Ακριβώς, ακριβώς. Λοιπόν, έχουμε κόμμα, το ξέρεις. Έχουμε κόμμα. Μέρα 25. Εντάξει. Σε εξήγη, he didn't know about the party. Τα δικά μου, τι έκανα, πες μου. Τα δικά σου, τι έκανα, ποιος με αυτό έκανε. Ήθελα να γυρίσουμε στην Γραμμή, τι. Πρώτον δεν ήθελα να γυρίσουμε στην Ευρωδραχμή. Και ήθελα το ακριβώς αντίθετο. Έκανα αυτό που έπρεπε να γίνει. Εγώ με πήρνω έναν ανθρώπο. You do have a reluctance to be positioned as the leader of the party, to be the, the face of the party. I mean, whenever I try and talk to you about that, it's a bit, well, hang on, no, we're a movement, there's many of us. But I mean, you are the, probably the most recognized so far. I mean, is it a balance for you to try and strike between getting... It's um, excruciating, the cult of the leader. This is detrimental to politics, to democratic politics. It's a lazy assumption that somebody's going to come and save you. This is so in all walks of life. You're always trying to find the simple, the shortcut. But there are no shortcuts in, in democracy. So. The Greek media and your former colleagues in Syriza often criticize you for being a narcissist. They say that you're driven by ego. Why do you think it is that this is such a common criticism of you? It's obvious, isn't it? When you do something that you know is wrong, but you have to say it's right, at some point there is this clash within your soul, and either you stop doing it, or you start justifying it, and then you vilify those who have not turned as well as you have. That's what they do. There must have been a moment when you resigned as minister where you could have been free from politics forever. When you have that kind of moral pressure, you can't say, well, I'm going to go away oh, yeah. and do my own thing. Yeah, also he had 140,000 uh, 140, votes of people that were expecting some... So I imagine that within the next year it doesn't catch on and people say, not interested. Then I'm free. At least I will feel that I'm no longer obligated. So, in the next Greek national elections, Yanis will run as Mera 25's candidate for Prime Minister. He's also DM 25's candidate for President of the European Commission. But rather than run as an MEP in Athens, he's decided instead to run in Berlin. Brexit party, like 15. Yeah. And you keep 14. Uh -huh. 
As uh, May approaches, you see, Farage is going to go through the roof. Anyway, it was saying what events are uh, important today. One, a Yellow West protest in Paris. Two, young Sorafak is coming to Berlin. Yeah. Who, who says yeah, who <laughs> There you are. Is, yeah, who's still alive? <laughs> Why are you standing for election in Germany and not in Greece? Because we need to signify to Greeks, to Germans, to the, the whole world that the current struggle is not between Greeks and Germans. It is between progressive, rational, humanist policies and authoritarianism, the two faces of authoritarianism on the other hand. Is it not because in Germany you only need 1% of the votes get elected rather than in Greece where you need 4%? Not in the slightest, and the proof of that is that I've already declared that even if I am elected in Germany, uh, within weeks I shall resign in order to fight the Greek national election. Isn't there sort of a, a basic contract that you enter into with voters, that when you say, vote for me, you then have a duty, a democratic responsibility to then deliver for them rather than resigning after Oh, it is, a, it is a social contract with voters. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand the symbolism of it. What I'm imploring German voters to do is to cast their vote for a party that has somebody like me on the leading position in order to signal to the rest of Europe that a new era of transnational progressive politics is beginning and we together as Europeans we will symbolize and signal to the rest of Europe that um, we are taking over and we are taking over on behalf of the many, not a few. Thanks very much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Auf der einen Seite yeah. ist die Realität. Wissen Sie Janis Varoufakis? Ne. Politiker, ja oder? Ja, ja, Politiker. Janis Varoufakis. Ach so. Ja. Yeah. Also so praktisch so Erdogan-mäßig. Krankheitsfällen, <laughs> Sterbefällen, Maybe two minutes. Sorry, but not important. No. What was he yeah, asking? Yeah, you've got to become more no, stricter I'm with journalists. No, I'm don't tell people they're not important. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I said the photograph is not important. I didn't say you are not important. There was a guy who thought you were a guy called Dr. Walter. <laughs> I was like, do you know who he is? He's that's like, a, yes. That's the alias. Dr. Walter. And I was like, mm. well. Yeah. Few people on the housing estate knew who Yanis Varoufakis was. But in central Berlin, a crowd was gathering to hear him speak at a pro-Europe rally. Um, applause for Janusz I am standing in front of you as a committed European. What we need is a Green New Deal for Europe that we can implement tomorrow to create the good quality jobs that will be invested in the green technologies that will defeat climate disaster tomorrow morning. Would you vote for him after hearing him speak today? Would you? I like that he uh, is uh, fighting for the EU, but I'm not sure about his uh, policy in Greece. <laughs> so would you vote for him? Do you think he has a chance of winning? Slightly biased, but I, I would want him to win. I don't know how, how much he can connect with the people here. I, mean, I think he can address maybe just a small group of people, maybe also the elite and not so much the broad. Is that because of the language barrier? Well, also maybe because of his ideas. <laughs> I don't know. While Janis is on course to get elected in Berlin, a win isn't guaranteed. And if his election isn't a sure thing, what hope do DiEM25's lesser-known candidates have? Good morning, DiEM is Brussels. We join the movement one last time for their manifesto launch in Brussels to see if the revolution was on course. Good morning, DiEM is 25th of March. Tonight is a big event here in Brussels. The weather is uh, suitably gloomy because Europe is gloomy and this is why we need the European Spring. Happy DiEM. <laughs> He's a politician and a fashion designer, <laughs> actually, right? What would be the group of people you'd represent? I'm representing cyborgs. Are you, are you like, going to read from a script? No, so that's why I'm going to... You need to focus. Four minutes to focus. 
I had five minutes to, to prepare my speech. Five minutes, that's now this is it. Uh, <laughs> great speech. Bon courage, I'm yeah, really bon the blonde suffragettes. Okay. So what, what is it about the movement then that made you want to get involved, like politically? Well, I know we have a lot of mutual friends and um, some brilliant people, kind of anti-politician, politicians. I think that's appealing. Yes, because if you want to be a politician, I think it's very suspicious. It is nowadays, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's have some fun. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This idea of an anti-politics political movement, led by a reluctant outsider called to politics for the greater good, was sounding pretty familiar. Are you not a progressive populist? Not in the slightest, because populism is all about cultivating the anger and the fear amongst those who have been held behind by the establishment, using that anger to win government and then turning against the people. Think Mussolini, think Hitler, think Salvini. So we are, I very much dispute the very term, the coherence of the term progressive populism. Can you actually win against those kind of forces while also rejecting populist messaging and populism in general? I have no idea. We're not in the business of predictions. We're in the business of doing that which must be done. Have you ever shared the stage with Pamela Anderson before? No, no, never. Are you impressed to be sharing the stage? No, not at all. <laughs> you just care about hope. <laughs> I care about a lot of things, come on. So do you think you're going to get elected? No, of course not. No. That was not my goal when I, when I started. No one seems to think they're going to get elected. No. What's I'm... the point? <laughs> the point is just to get our message out there, to, to yeah. show people that our program exists. Yeah. Do you think the message is going to land with people? Do you think it's going to resonate? I think yeah. at the moment, DM and European Spring, uh, as much as I hate to admit it, uh, it gathers a lot of intellectuals, philosophers, all these kind of people who are really good with like coming up with interesting ideas, but they're maybe not really good at addressing people. You need a simple language to address people in this day and age. I don't think we'll, we'll reach our goals and get this program enacted in the, in the coming few years. We won't do it in one, two, three, because that would be the same as any, and that would be populism, I think, in my opinion. With just a few weeks to go until the election, the M25 is polling under 4% in all of the seven countries it's running. Its two big adversaries, the centre bloc Varoufakis calls the establishment, and the ultra-right he calls fascists, look set to share around 70% of the total vote. Varoufakis seems to know DiEM25 can't deliver its vision at this election. But given what he says is at stake, is a revolution inevitable? And if he's not leading it, who will?